uh, we've uh, we're still doing this example where we consider a quiver with uh, with one vertex and uh, and one loop, and so it's a, it's a general it's a general principle that gives a solution of uh, a certain elliptic or a trigon or a trigonometric, depending whether you're in uh, in full elliptic homology, whether you generate the generate elliptic curve to uh, to a nodal curve, or or you can further take the rational limit. So we talked about that, and so this will give you a solution of young baxter equation, and we would like to uh, to understand this solution. So I want to understand want to understand it in um, actually let me let me do this. Okay. So we would like to understand that in terms of a certain um, certain moving stuff around on my computer. So we'd like to understand in terms of certain, um, to understand a goal, to understand, understand the solution. Well, like I said, the rational solution, we talk, we talk about a lot of things in quantum groups are done by deformation, it means you understand some special point and then you, you understand enough features of that special point that you then confident to conclude that this is, uh, this certain features, well, they will become more complicated as a general point, but uh, will remain the same. In terms of, in terms of um, certain conformal field theory, and in particular with certain various or, you know, it's, it's a various, in fact, in terms of various or algebra. And uh, so, like I said, this is uh, this in particular case. This will depends. This depends on some parameters. But in principle, it's in print. Was it? I get a weird echo here. I'm not sure what to do. Um, so this parameters in. So, um, okay, so these parameters are, um, uh, depends on parameters. These parameters come from the fact that I, I in my query where I have an action of, I, I, I'm allowed to scale every edge, so I can scale an edge with the weight T1. But when then I get the cotangent, the, you know, there is a, the quiver is a, quiver gets framing and gets kind of the dual cotangent direction. When I get that cotangent direction, that in principle will be in cohomology will be scaled with the weight which is minus h bar minus t1, which we can one can denote this to be t2, and so this means h bar is means the, the variable h bar is minus t1 minus t2. So it depends on these two variables, but of course in cohomology, cohomology is a graded theory, and then um, and then this depends really on the Really depends on only on up to scale in cohomology. And so the one there's, there's one there's one uh, parameter kind of scale invariant parameter t1 t2 which is convenient to introduce and maybe we'll go like t1 plus t2 which is proportional to h bar over t1, t2, maybe this one squared. So this has degree zero, and maybe we denote this guy to be like kappa squared, something like that. So that's, a, that's really one parameter here. Or we can, one can take the ratio of t1 and t2, that'll be, this would be another parameter, another way to parameterize that. <laughs> Weird sound effects today, and so already you know asked last time is that what was the what is the meaning of this uh, 
what's the meaning of this Virasaur algebra? And the Virasaur algebra really finds it's all this, all the features that uh, we see in this uh, in this example, they really find their explanation in some higher dimensional geometry. So in principle, one should be one should be ambitious. One should be to be talking about not the kind of uh, problems that we addressing here, but the, like a full eleven dimensional lamp theory. But uh, but one particular instance in where you can uh, see how some higher dimensional geometry comes into play is this uh, is this one way to see, to see it is uh, is through this AGT relations. AGT stands for I'll die out in Tachikawa, and they say the following is that we if we take that C two. This C2, this is the C2 on which the, this is where, this is where, this is the corresponding quiver variety is the modulus piece of instantons. And that C2 is where instantons live. So this is, this will take that C2 or you can, or maybe more physical, you can think of this as R4, it's Euclidean space. And then, you you free to you free to consider a six dimensional manifold by crossing it with a, with a, a, any Riemann surface, maybe call it C Riemann surface. And on this, so this will be a six manifold, and there's something on this. This could be uh, the world volume of a M5 brain in M theory. So in fact, you can put on this, you could put a stack. That's not how I spell the stack. And stack not in the sense of algebraic geometry, but really in the stack of like a stack of pancakes. Stack of uh, R M5 brains. M5 brains are certain extended objects in M theory, which I don't know much about, but they, they exist. <laughs> and AGT says, well, this is, well, we don't know about M5 brain so much, but we can uh, we can if we put them in this geometry, then we can tell, talk about the, the resulting computation two in two different languages. We can either compute with instantons. So this is the the corresponding partition function. You can express as either you can compute with either compute with instantons. You can do this kind of Nikrasov partition function. Microsoft counts of instantons. And this would be equated or in a different language, and this would therefore be the same. This would be, uh, this would be here, this will be a uh, CFT on, on the C with, um, with in fact a certain extended symmetry algebra, namely, Take the W algebra of GLR symmetry that contains Verisora. So this is you can this is on this slide, and this this is a generalization. This is like um, some kind of a, a, you know really souped up version of Louisville theory here, this one. And so then, um, and, uh, and right, and and so, and the way, so we're gonna, so we, we're not gonna be talking about M5 brains in this course at all. From our perspective, we talk about three-dimensional theory. So this would be from, from our perspective, we can understand kind of M2 brains. We, we would like to understand M2 brains. M2 brains is something, the world volume of M2 brains is three-dimensional. The three-dimensional theory of, lives on M2 brain. And from us, from us, we, we somehow, we, we don't see these degrees of freedom so intrinsically in, in, in this three-dimensional geometry. From from us, it's just some Lie algebra. This very sorely I mean, some part of some algebra, but this is this is how you can explain it. Why why that part comes in here, and in fact, you can say a little more. So this is this is here here we here for us we're computing for us we can we're computing the representation the action. For us, we can we, we talk about the action of a certain quantum group, the name of the Yangian of GL one hat. So this operates for us, and so this goes 
this goes into endomorphisms of so we, we we the moduli the cohomology of the moduli spaces of instant nodes of rank r this is for us the r fold tensor product of fox space so this is so take a fox space and we'll take it to the r's power but in fact this map so and in fact this map that goes that factors through the image of this map is in fact a certain completion of this WGR and maybe up to there's some completion which may be not so important so in other words this is this is the image of the Yang yeah? so all of this all of these W algebras you can understand as uh, as uh, as uh, image of the Yangian and R fold tensor power of its defining representation. And uh, so maybe pictor a little pictorial, if you think of it, kind of the pic write the picture of of uh, algebra GL one hat. So maybe okay, these are sort of the roots. So this is maybe alpha minus one, alpha minus two, and so forth. Alpha one, alpha two, alpha. The way <clears throat> the way these are usually defined, the the, mind, the negative ones are the raising operators. So this is this is GL one, and then you can in a, in a quantum group. They get their brothers, so these are the older brothers of them, and maybe we put them in a different color or this color. I apologize, my Let me get kind of you know, yet another. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm getting a little carried away here with uh, with uh, using different colors, but uh, so kind of two axes here. And so this would be this would be saying, like for example, here this would be. Uh, a generator which is like T T square times alpha minus three. This is the one. This is one. Something like that here. And so and so then, if you take, if you if you form the, if you act on one Fox space that 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 the uh, already the uh, Act in one fork space, then already the alpha sector is usable, and everything else is a function of the alphas. If you act in two fork spaces, and as we'll see, the first two row, so this would be this is where in two when you act in two fork spaces, the second row that's the verse or algebra. This is where it sits, and then the the, the, the first two row act 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 uh, irreducibly and, and, and it's like, like a Verma module and everything else is a, is, a, is a function of them. If you act in a threefold tensor power, then this would be, then the first three row will act, will act, it will be like a Verma module for the first three row and so on and so forth. So this would be, so that would be, maybe this is like the W algebra of GL3. And this is if you if you act in a threefold tensor power, these guys act nicely, and everything else is a function of that. Um, so, so okay. So then, <clears throat> so now we go back to uh, uh, we go back to this uh, the systematic discussion of this material, and uh, maybe a remark I want to make. So today, for 
for uh, for brevity of the for brevity of the kind of ease of the exposition and brevity of the discussion, we work up to up to powers of minus one, two, and up to cohomology labels. Meaning, remember that the uh, alpha, like minus k, this was a correspondence between help, help n, help n cross c2 going to help n plus k. And in principle, so you get this cohomology label, which for c2 is, is a little silly. Uh, but it is some does have some equivalent significance, and for example, this this denominator. So I put this this fraction with t1, t2, and denominator. That's typical result of integrating something over over c2. That's uh, it's like equivalent integration over c2. So this is this has this cohomology labels, which I'm not. I'm just going to ignore today. So this is, and uh, yeah, otherwise it's. <clears throat> and so then we have a. Uh, uh, we already constructed so this is we, we, so in addition I remind you that this is so if I want the actual definition of GL1 hat that is the algebra generated by um, by this alpha n and then a central element C and then the loop rotation which I may be right um, what I would like the droop rotation maybe t by dt, something like that, with the with the commutation relation. So this is with the commutation relation that uh, alpha m alpha m is n times delta n plus m, and this is uh, times c. And so okay, so this c this is the rank. So this is R, and so this is the this is the same as the rank of in, in the quiver language. So when I talk about quivers, I have maybe I have this like fully kind of doubled quiver, something like that. And here I have my vector space V, and here I have my vector space W, and so on my quiver. Mo on my query variety, I, I have induced vector bundles, namely the vector bundle V and the vector bundle W. W is a trivial bundle, but has a non-trivial current action. So that's, this is the same as rank of V. And this guy here, that is the same as L naught of the Verisoro, and it's the same as, as the, uh, sorry, so rank, I apologize, this is rank of W. And this is, and this is the rank. This is the rank. This is the same as number of points. This is the rank of D. You know, this is, this is the rank of D and that's, more or less the same as all node of the verse, or not exactly the same, but we'll get this uh, to get in the, in the minute. And in fact, and in fact, the um, that minute will be now in in that I you if you're paying attention, you will notice that that except we didn't get we don't get uh, alpha naught from one over u coefficient in the R matrix. So this is definition of the of the classical of the Lie algebra was is whatever you get in the one over u coefficient from the R matrix. And if you're paying attention, then then alpha naught is not there. Alpha naught is some operator which I haven't assigned here. But alpha naught, it's convenient to put it here for the ease of writing various formulas. And then uh, and the reason is it's it will be so this, in fact, so in fact, what we will do, 
it will define alpha naught to be to be c1 of v in other words in other words if i have <laughs> what does it mean if i have my fox space you know r standard power then alpha naught here operates by just this whatever sum of equivalent variables so this would be in my cohomology that would be like a1 plus a2 plus whatever plus a r this is the this is this is sum sum of framing variables And you see, so in particular, you see that this alpha naught, if I, it's so like a co-product of alpha naught is alpha naught, this guy is primitive, et cetera. So this is, this is, this comes not in the, in other words, this, this operator you don't find in one over U coefficient because it's C1 of a, of a vector bundle. C1 of a vector bundle, you find in one over U square. But this operator is convenient to put here. So. And the reason it's convenient to put it here is that this is makes, makes, makes formulas like the following kind. And smarter, namely, if I if we introduce alpha of z, a generating function, maybe alpha of t, maybe we can call it t if you want. Alpha of t, this would be a generating function over n alpha n t to the minus n. Then, uh, then we can ask about expressions like like the integral of normal ordered alpha to some power you know, square or integral of a normal order cubed and so forth. And so this normal order means where normal order means means uh, put annihilation first. This is many people, many people uh, <laughs> have this approach to life. They first destroy and then they say they will create. And so then uh, that is, uh, that's, uh, that's what you do here. You first, if you have uh, 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 operators that create annihilate, you first act by the, in the order of so that they, they first act by the annihilation operator and then by creation operators. And then, um, and then the integral means you put, Integral means extract the coefficient coefficient of t to the naught. I mean, just the constant term in t to the naught means you integrate. So this is this is <clears throat> you should think you should imagine that your t really varies here. This is where that this is where that t is. And when you integrate over this, it means you this is this is. Uh, so the C star, when you integrate over a circle, you extract the constant coefficient of your variable. And so, so in particular, if I um, if I ask uh, what is the integral of alpha square, that expression, this would be this would be well, there's the zero mode, so this would be alpha naught squared plus summation over n, and then, you know, maybe put one half here because that, that's, and so there'll be one half to zero mod squared plus summation over n, and then alpha minus n alpha n. This is bigger than zero. So you put, when, uh, when you have a choice between annihilation and creation, you put the annihilation first. Right, and so you see that this is if you write expression like this, it does matter to have a zero mode, especially if you go beyond if you take a cube, then the cube will so if you have a zero mode, then the cube that zero mode is uh is will be uh 
will be will will affect the formulas in a, in a, in, a, in well in a good way. Just yes, assume you write smarter formulas this way with this. Um, all right. And so uh, what did we discuss in this language? I.e., in this language we computed that the R the classical R matrix. So this would be in in the um, you know how to distinguish the German R with the or the fracture R with the so this means the classical R matrix. In this language, you can be, you can say that this is the integral of alpha minus normal order square. Maybe I want round number two. And so this is acts on the acting on the uh <clears throat> so where alpha 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 plus minus I remind you that was alpha tensor one plus minus one tensor alpha. I don't need the brackets here. So this acts this acting in fog tensor fog. So this means, <clears throat> so in particular, since it's a minus, this the whole R matrix, and we've noticed that the whole commutes this alpha plus. That was the observation. So, uh, so now. I claim that the following the following are equivalent. This is this is abbreviation I dislike, but I'm gonna use it for brevity here. So this is so the following are equivalent is that you we you it's enough to know so if you wanna know one over u square coefficient of the whole matrix R of U or it is the same as one over u square coefficient in you just take the, so this is a matrix in Fox tensor Fox and you can take a, a, you can take a vacuum, vacuum in the first factor and whatever in the second factor. Right? So this is, this we discussed, we discussed that if I, since I, it commutes, since it commutes with a plus, this is, any operator that commutes with a with a plus only acts on a minus. If you want to know how it acts, it's enough to compute it the vacuum vacuum in the first factor. So this is because commutes with a plus. And this is uh, and this operator by by what we By the general principle, this is a vacuum vacuum element of a, of a, of an R matrix, and so this is the same. To know what this operator is, it's the same. So maybe I'll put it. You can if you know this or this, or the operator the router of Multiplication by C one of V. So this is this is the this is the tautological bundle. So the but in general, so we 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 uh, the vacuum vacuum matrix elements they 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 have some characteristic class of tautological vector bundles, and in particular. One in one over so the, the counting is always like that. Is in one over u term you find uh, the like the rank, and one over u square you can find rank and c one, and so on and so forth. So this is the 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 more coefficient the the deeper you go into cohomology. So this is here you can just just c one. So it's enough to know all these operators. 
and and maybe before we discuss what these operators are, so these are this is so maybe maybe kind of an important observation, maybe and you know you'll be judged with the report or not. So this is here. So this is one operator in a certain quantum integral system. And uh, okay, so this is uh, this is a remark more philosophical than, than mathematical. And uh, well, how do we see this? What's a quantum integrable system? A quantum integrable system is, well, I mean, it depends on definitions, but more or less it's a, it's a commutative maximal, I mean, it's some kind of nice commutative family of operators in some space. <laughs> and, and here it's clear. So these are the, you take, you take uh, on this side, you can you can take cup product by all characteristic classes, well cup product by just the whole all cup all operators of cup product. They commute because all cohomology of the Hilbert scheme is even, even if it's well, even if it's uh, if it wasn't even still would super commute. So they they really commuting family of operators, and in fact they and they uh, since it's an algebra, it's a maximal commutative. Uh, so if you have a if you have an algebra, then operators for multiplication for maximal commutative uh, subalgebra in the algebra of operators, if all possible linear operators. And on this side, this is a special case. This is a limit case. This guy here. This is a limit case. Of um, a Baxter subalgebra, namely Young Baxter equation, implies so suppose so this is, this is the really observation by Baxter and it's very well known. Baxter says the following: suppose suppose you have an operator z such that z tensor z commutes with our matrices. Then, then the operators. Then, if I consider trace over the first factor, I put z tensor one times r, maybe one two of u. So this is this is an element in endomorphisms. of the second factor. This 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 commute for fixed z. So z has to be fixed and and all u. So it means if you take any kind of functional expansion of this in U, this will be you get a commuting cost family of operators. And the proof of that is this classical proof, which I can't resist sketching this is, is that if I have what is the how you should think of this operator, you should think of this operator as having kind of a, something like that. So this is you know, maybe. This is where the first factor goes. So this is this is z, and so this is um, this is the first factor and this is the second factor. <coughs> so it means you take a trace. Means as you go, you, you close that loop and you take uh, and you take the uh, you insert z. So that's that's my operator here. It's this operator. And then, if you want to commute to such, or well, what you do, you take, you take, uh, so what you need to compute is you need to compute something like that. So this is one of them. So 
So they, they have the same Z on both sides here. And <clears throat> And so now, since they, uh, what one can do is one can insert I can insert an R matrix and the opposite R and the inverse R matrix here, and then close the loop. Okay, so this is R and R inverse. And then by the Young Baxter equation, you can, by the Young Baxter equation, you can maybe, maybe let me indicate the insertion from operator Z here, so maybe this is. So Young-Baxter equation lets you move this, you know, by Young-Baxter you can move lets you move this line into this position and then there's also cyclicity of trace and there's a commutation with that and it's that and you see that this would become this kind of one and one prime will will come permuted on the will come permuted on the other side <clears throat> so anyway this you can you can uh, you can reconstruct the rest and unless you, if you don't know the rest and you can reconstruct it from this from this from the explanation i hope and so now uh Going back to this, the following car equivalent, the following car equivalent abbreviation. So the following car equivalent. So I explained before that this is to know one over u square coefficient of the R matrix. Uh, it's enough to know. It's enough to know its vacuum vacuum matrix elements. It's enough to know one operator, the operator of uh, multiplication by the first Jordan class. And so this is so the following car equivalent is that well one is direct knowledge of the of the of the of the <coughs> of the uh, R matrix and that is if you can prove that the 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 R matrix of U this has this expansion so I take the log that's the easy that's easier so it starts with this H bar over to U integral alpha minus square. So I, put them, I think I put minus downstairs. Plus, and then the next term. So the, the R matrix is trivial when H bar is zero. So all terms have to be divisible by H bar. And so this is, <clears throat> so that means the next term will be also divisible by H bar. And this it goes like that, there's a square term. And then is that is the cube plus okay so one over u cube cubed so that's that's one thing that's equivalent and so a second thing that's equivalent to this computation is that the operator c one of the that logical bundle. That is up to up to stuff. That is the Hamiltonian or maybe maybe second quantized. of the quantum trigonometric closure of Sutherland. 
And what this what this guy looks like, it's it's this H closure Sutherland. This has the form roughly like that. So it's the it's the cube term here plus a term that is that is um that's uh some non local term. So first of all there's a constant which I think all kind of an important that specify constant in uh in, in this lecture will be denoted by kappa, and that is basically the kappa I defined at the beginning. So I'm gonna put that kappa, so this is a constant. This is a constant, but it's important. So then, um, and then a term which is, doesn't look like a, it comes from vertex operators, but uh, like n alpha minus n alpha n. But if you think about how this is supposed to be a vacuum matrix element of an R matrix, you see that this this term here, which is a perfectly kind of nice, nice, nice kind of zero mode of the vertex operator, by computing the uh, the vacuum vacuum matrix element, will give you this this sort of expression, which is this is this is non-local. This involves like Hilbert transform, and so this is also also in this language, this quantum trigonometric closure of Sutherland. That's the same as the Benjamin Ono. In Benjamin Ono equation, there's Hilbert transform, and that it comes here. So this is this is a small term here. And uh, so, uh, so, of course, the the generalization that we you should all should know is that in K theory, all this becomes this, or we're talking about McDonald's operators. So, uh, so now what is that, um, what's that, uh, what's this collodial system? Collodial system is a system of a uh, quantum particle that sit on a, uh, that sit on a on a circle, so, and they interact with uh, with the potential, which is so. This is a system of particles, maybe called you know x i x j, and they interact with the potential, which is some other constant, which is depends on depends on that kappa, and then um, and then some well, one over x i minus x j the square. So they interact with inverse square potential in the circle, and then you can look for eigenfunctions. Of the form you take, there's a product, there's a eigenfunction of the form where you take product over ILJ xi minus xj raised to some third constant, which I'm not going to specify, which again also related to kappa, and then times symmetric polynomial, polynomial of xi. And so it's this. It's in the language of this symmetric polynomial. That you get that this operator here acts. So this is. This is this is where this. Act, and the way you identify, uh, you you know, this can be this can be taken to be. Uh, this can be taken. So this is. Here you, here you can imagine that you have infinity of variables. It doesn't matter that somehow it stabilizes. They get the, and so then uh, we're, we're alpha minus n x by just multiplication by x i to the n from i goes from one to infinity. So this infinity you can this can make it's kind of important that here here the operator stabilizes. So it makes sense to talk about 
symmetric functions in infinitely many variables. And, and these are the, these eigenfunctions are this kind of jack. These are the, these are the jack symmetric functions. Polynomials, the special cases of McDonald's polynomials. All right, so this is this is two, this is three. Is uh, the three is if you want to know how some operator acts, it's since since alpha ions act reducibly, it's enough to know how this operator is commutes with 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 the alpha ions. And so this is, you can compute, you can prove, well, I mean, all of those things you can prove. And this was, this was originally the first computation. This was the computation. This, it, that was the computation that I bound len. Uh, so that is a verso. Uh, this is a verso. And that makes sense in the sense that if you can, if you uh, go back, if we go back to this picture, which I, which we had here. So this C1 of tau, it's an operator that sits here. So this is, this is, this is that C1 of the tautological. This is the scalogical operator, this is where it sits. Our, our, our accounting is slightly, you know, slightly off in that, in that like L0 of the Verisora, it somehow ended up, L0 of the Verisora, it somehow ended up sitting in this part. But uh, but the place of L naught of the Verisoro is taken by by this this next operator, and so if you if you take the commutator of alpha two with, with if you take the commutator of two operators, then you should get an operator which is it's here, right? So by, by this by degrees of gradient, it should be you know you should be that that should be the commutator. This guy here should be the commutator of alpha minus two with this C one, and so that is that is how you get Verisoro. So this is, Len had some geometric computation for that, and then uh, the fourth property, maybe geometrically is the easiest. Is I suppose you want to know this is kind of related computation for this, and that is uh, suppose you want to know how the operator. So we have we're talking about some Hopf algebra, right? and some Hopf algebra uh, has a coproduct. And our Hope algebra has our particular Hope algebra has very few primitive elements. I mean, in general, the, the more complicated Hope algebra is, the less primitive elements it has. For us, it has the Lie algebra, okay, but then, but then other than this, there is none. And then, uh, so Lie algebra is pretty, so usually if you take a, a a quantum group, which is like a Q quantum group, it's it's only then then it's really really very few primitive elements. If you take in the Yang and that the Lie algebra itself is primitive. But uh, so if you want to know something about an operator, the first thing to know is ask how it can multiply. And so this is this is just saying, so this is what does it mean a coproduct? It means you have to compute means <coughs> what what does it mean take a coproduct? It means you could compute it, compute, compute the action of C1. In the stable basis, of Fox square. Right? So this this is what it means to be coproduct means you but you identify shifts of instantons of rank two with tensor square of instantons of rank one, and you pull back the operator via this map. This means asking how it co-multiplies. And so then this result is that this is, this is again, it's a, that, there's something you can compute directly. This is C1 tensor one plus one tensor C1 minus H bar summation and bigger than zero alpha, sorry. And alpha and tensor alpha minus. So you just, this is a, <clears throat> And then from this, you you see if you if you commute it, if you commute it with alpha ends twice, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a constant. Means means if I take it if, if I commute it, no, sorry, if you commute it 
anyway, the fact that the commutator, what does it mean to have a Verisor? It means you, 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 commute the, you take, compute the commutator with C11, you get the Verisor. What does it mean Verisor? Verisor means it has a particular commutation relation. I give kind of ln alpha m. That is like, you know, I think maybe minus m. Let me look at minus. And we decided today with it's optimum plus minus. So, uh, so I guess I can, I can say minus, minus m alpha m plus m, right? So this means, <clears throat> so this, this, this means something, some relation of that general kind, of that general flavor. And then, um, and then, uh, so this particular, if you want to know, Right. If you commute it, if you commute it, if it's a something which you commute with alphas twice, you get you get a constant, and that is this is something you can commute from here because if you commute with alphas twice, you get you get uh, you get something which is uh, which is uh, which is primitive. <laughs> so. Um, Or even better, it's already here. If you commute, if you commute the com, right, right. With alpha, no, this means if we compute with alpha, right. <laughs> Sorry, it says this, if you commute with alpha twice, you get something which is primitive. Okay, so that's which is something you see here. <clears throat> All right, and this is in fact a general, this is, this is general, this is very general. Namely, if I want to compute, if I have a divisor, if I have a, a multiplication by divisor, and I want to compute, so what C1 of some bundle, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cup product by divisor. So I take it, so let D, Let D be an operator, D an operator of cup product by a divisor. Then, then if I compute the cup product of that, well, I'm going to get D times one plus one times D minus H bar, and then I'm going to get sum over positive roots. Positive roots of are indexed by by effective curves. And then here I'm going to get the pairing of the divisor. So this n is in fact a pairing of one, which is tautological. Tautological bundle is the generator of Picard. So it's the, you know, and n is the degree of the, the corresponding curve. Again, kind of, kind of R alpha. Maybe I'll write e kind of beta, e minus beta. This means, this is really means canonical tensor. In G beta, G minus beta. So remember last time we talked about how um, how this uh, uh, the Lie algebra is cut out by some projector in some in some cohomology, and so that in particular that it, it counts with a certain canonical tensor in, in in some root space tensor the dual root space. And that's that's the general formula. But in this particular case, it's specialized to this. Okay, so this is four, and now is some more statements that are equivalent to that, right? And so of course then this, then this I take, if I take, uh, so another statement is that if I take alpha minus n, if I take that, the summation of x i to the n, then then what are the eigen, what are the eigenfunctions? Of um, of multiplication by anything. Those are the those are the fixed points of cohomology. Then fixed points, which is the fixed points, are the eigenfunctions of operators of cup product. Right. So if I have a, a fixed point in 
torus fixed point and if it had lots of point. And so it's a multiplication cohomology as well, the cover multiplication in, by whatever restriction of the class. And so, uh, so this means this quantum integral system we're talking about not only it's uh, not only in commutative, but in fact diagonalized explicitly. So, it means, for example, its spectrum is not it's not a mystery; it's something explicit. And so, this should go to the to this check polynomials. And this would be, and this could be. So, these are these are determined. by triangularity orthogonality. And similar, so this is, both the fixed points are in cohomology, they're orthogonal, and uh, so it's a question. So this is a statement about a certain triangularity and which is, again, one can check. And so that's, uh, and of course, we have, I've listed five different statements and then of course many proofs, many different proofs. E.g. four and five can be seen directly. And also, also one, one can be seen directly from the following, from the following observation is that, that which we discussed a couple of lectures ago, because if I want to do, do the, the R matrix for GL1 hat, that's some infinite product of R matrices for just GL infinity. <clears throat> Having to do with my quiver, being a uh, since I have a quiver being covered by this is this is this quiver this quiver here it is the quotient of the infinite curve modulus z and so that's a and so <clears throat> in some sense if you this you can certainly compute this R matrix, you can certainly compute the one, so then the take one can take take one over U square coefficient. And one can certainly do, and this is explained. This is, if you know an explicit computation, this is, you can look at the paper binary smeared off about it. I guess in, in conformal field theory, there are many Smirnov, there's Fedor Smirnov, there's Tas Smirnov, and there's also Andrei Smirnov, and so this is, look, that's, I mean, Andrei Smirnov here. And so, uh, so that's that's the that's the that's the conclusion of this computation of one over u square coefficient in the R matrix. But as I already said last time, this computation is uh, is in fact gives you um, gives you the full R matrix. And the reason that gives you full R matrix is that because if I if I can um, From Young Baxter, this this one operator that maybe I'll describe fuller matrix. From Young Baxter, as follows. So. So this is, <clears throat> so consider the cohomology of this kind of rank two instantons. And uh, this week we have, uh, there's a framing, there's a framing action on there. And so this gives you two different identifications. Maybe I'll write stop and um, stop 
stub or stub plus or stub the other edge stub like that. There are two 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 kind of chambers here. With fog tensor fog. And then here I can consider the operator of the C1 with a logical bundle. It's like a rank two brother of the closure operator. And then I can pull it back here. And if I pull it back here, this would be what? This would be here, it'll become, it depends on, depending on, on the, whether it's stop plus or stop minus, this would be, this guy would be like, you take the R01, R02, and then you take a vacuum and then something, something, vacuum, something, something, right? Or the other way around. Or the other way around, so R02, R01, vacuum, vacuum, something, something. And this is this is this is the state precisely permuted by the young box. So this is precisely permuted by the R matrix. Okay, but that's a sense we already know the R matrix to one over Q square theorem. So we know that these are both of these are explicit operators. And in particular, we can decompose, so the, the Ziegler operators, they act in, in folk, tensor folk, <clears throat> and we can <coughs> identify this folk tensor folk with folk plus and folk minus. As we as we did before, and this is the, <clears throat> some some. We know the R matrix. This is the R matrix only acts. So this is R. R one two. So maybe I'll. How that be? R one two act only acts here. Here in this factor. So we'll have to preserve whatever that guy is. <clears throat> and so this this uh, this explicit operators, well, I mean, it's not it's not a, it's not a difficult computation. We have uh, explicit formulas, and so this will come out to be something of the following kind, where we 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 mostly interested in kind of cross terms. So there will be you know something which is. We're not interested in something which is in plus. Well, let's look at the cross terms. And the cross terms will be, have the following kind. This will be like alpha n plus tensor L minus n minus, and then it will have this kind of dependence on the chamber. So this means it acts, this means this acts here and this acts there where where this where this is the virtual operator and that <clears throat> okay that makes sense right i mean we 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 come from the fact of virasoro so maybe i'll explain so virasoro okay sugawara sugawara type Virasoro for, well, I guess maybe Shugavara is maybe a little overkill, but for G, well, GL1 hat is something of the form. So if you take the coefficients, is you take summation, is, is your stress, is summation L, I apologize.
is L to the n t to the minus n, this is the normally ordered square of alpha of t. So since we, <clears throat> in our operator, we had a cube, so that means, uh, that means when we take a cube and we decompose it into, into you know, two tensor factors, there will be a part where you have the something of degree one in one side and something of degree two in the other side. And so this, is, this, is, this makes sense. Uh, so this is kind of not the banner, but this would be um, the, this is not the very sort we want here. So maybe I'll put a zero here. So, but there will be some from uh, from uh, from this kind of matrix element for this like matrix elements and stuff. There will be other. There will be slight corrections, and the slight corrections take the following form: is that this L L um, N then there's kind of two choices here. So this is you know what? Why don't I I insert I have those guys in the background and so maybe I'll insert them here now. So um insert so that you don't have to go look at the background, let us let me just do it in the, you did here. Here. Here it is. So you can. Um, so this is like a like a Shugawara versor, except except you get uh, except you get this little this little addition here. You get uh, get this linear term that pro with proportional to the constant. Now this constant is the, the constant I want, the kappa. And so this means there's also uh, maybe I'll copy it here. That depending. So the sign in front of that kappa that depends. Ln is well. I'll just write it down. Summation alpha k alpha n minus k, and then now I have a choice. And here would be this plus minus that, and then everything is important. N is important. The kappa is important, so kappa, some other color. What's the monica? Kappa, and then alpha n. Sorry. And so this this is depending on which chamber you are, you're going to get a plus or minus here, and so that means that the that the uh, the, the R matrix will have to intertwine this. Uh, will have to intertwine this too. So this means this has to be exchanged. So the R matrix. R matrix changes. Changes plus to to minus. And why would well, how can it change plus to minus? Because it's some representation that they both form a representation of Verisor algebra. How can it be that you can take uh, some representation and change it to the other representation? And the reason being is that this is representation. So this is my folk minus. So, so remember, I get me this folk plus tensor folk minus. And we, we're interested in this part. Our matrix only acts here. So this part, this is this is Verma module. For Verasoro, 
with highest weight, maybe lowest weight. Well, what would be in the lowest weight? The lowest weight is the is the smallest eigenvalue of this L operator L naught. And so the smallest operator eigenvalue of the operator L naught is when I applied it to the vacuum. There's no, you know, nothing. And so my uh, my normally ordered part here annihilates the vacuum, and so this would be so the slowest weight delta is I can well I apply alpha naught somehow act on the vacuum, so this would be one over two alpha. No, but what is alpha naught? Alpha naught. So maybe all right. This fork was originally was fork. It had some evaluation parameters, which maybe I'll write as u1 tensor u2, where where this uh, these are the framing variables. And then my uh, my u was the difference between them. And that is the eigenvalue. This is the eigenvalue. Of alpha naught in uh, Fock minus, right? Because when you take a Fock minus, you take you take uh, alpha naught minus and Fock minus. The difference between two alpha naughts, each alpha naught was just this u, and so this this is this is going to be the difference between u one minus u two squared, and then you get this kappa minus kappa square over two. And then central charge central charge, well it's a computation, it will be minus twelve. I think it's minus twelve over kappa. And so point is that they're both invariant. With respect to well the, the the operations we interested in is where you take kappa to minus kappa, but also uh, you can take u1, you exchange u1 and u2. But uh, that's also a symmetry, but that's uh, that's essentially the same symmetry because <clears throat> what you can do is, I mean, if you take both, then this is the same as uh, taking alpha and sending to the minus alpha. So that's a, so this is not a, that would be an, that wouldn't be a very interesting symmetry, but if you're a, and so and so this this the, the conclusion is that the R matrix R matrix is does nothing in plus and thus reflection. So this is this is the terminology this terminology comes from Louisville CFT where this variable there is a is a, is really just momentum there and so that means you change u1 minus u2 you reflect that which means you change the momentum, and so does reflection in, uh, in so there's nothing in Fock plus and this the Fock minus. And so this means this is really uh this is really parallel to what happens for uh ordinary fine dimensional symmetries where you take a, like a GLN GLN type R matrices and you decompose, I mean the typical take a square of representation typically decomposes into like a symmetric square and exterior square. So those are like a, and so this, this is this is analogous to that. And so that's the thing. So anyway, uh, also you should think of this as you, you really have an interaction of two bosons. And this is like a, you know, this is like a center of mass. This is what you said, this is, you should think of the really two bosons and here the two bosons, two free bosons that live on your remote surface C. And this is the center of mass. Of um, and then relative position. This is 
to go down. This is relative position. Okay. One last remark about it is that um, is that this is when considering we can always compute the determinant of the R matrix. On the one hand explicit because because we have a uh, we can have because the R matrix is stub this sort of expression so these are two triangular matrices <clears throat> and you can compute this block these are triangular On the other hand, <clears throat> when is it zero? Is when is when one of this representation is actually not isomorphic to the other, and so it means it means you have a. Uh, so this is this is really like a. So it means it have a one representation, and if you want to, you want to say it's a it's a one this representation is dual of the other. And so this is this is the determinant, and so and so this is uh, isomorphism between them. <clears throat> so, so if I if I take uh, if I take uh, the the transpose, if you, if you take, right, I said it. So one of the it's it's always the case that tensor products in one factor the the dual of the R matrix. The dual of stop is is stop is the opposite stop, and so the I think a tensor product in one order, then the dual of that is a tensor product in the opposite order. So one of this representation is the dual of the other representation, and so the R matrix. What's what's isomorphism between? And so this R is the isomorphism. between between representation and its tool. And so this is this is the four, it's just the same as the determinant of the Shapovalov form. And so you get so Get cut from. Which is as So uh, <clears throat> that's one. That's one. That's one application. Now, so this is this we we talked about some particular case, and I kept stressing that this is uh, this is uh, the general case can be understood by deformation, and um, but in this case it's it's really uh, it's really so it means what does it mean what does it mean to to show that the deformation is flat, the, to show deformation is flat as well, we we have we, the way we define the R matrix is that the it's just sorry the way we define the quantum group is just you take matrix elements of R matrices right so this means means the generators obviously deform so then it's a question to ask to ask whether the relations deform and the uh, and then uh, so this is this is a general in fact a general discussion and I'm a little bit I mean a little bit out of time for this but um, but um, but but nonetheless let's 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 talk a little bit about it so this is 
so it's a general topic with eight relations. Quantum groups. Like we, like we discussed many, many lectures ago, I think back in like lecture two, lecture three, then, uh, so these are just operators that commute with our matrices. So it's some operator, maybe call that operator phi, that has the property that it commutes. So, so, so there's some tensor product coming in, some tensor product coming out, and this guy here, So if I take the R matrix here, that is the same if I get it there. So these are operators. And there's a geometric source of such. So um, this will be, maybe the full discussion of that would be, uh, would be, would be next time. So, but so. Source are, are, are the following operations which you can Called slices. So uh, remember, we had, we always have this picture in the back of our mind is that uh, so our, our variety X is some smooth variety, just kind of like the cotangent to P1. This was you know, some, some kind of variety X here. And then uh, on which, you know, how things like bikers. And then then this, this is a resolution of something singular. And on that something singular, one of the one of the things we've uh, discussed is that uh, if I act by this h bar there, that that there's a there's only one and only one and only fixed point here. Um, um, like h bar. the most singular point in X naught. However, if I specialize other equivalent variables, what I can do if I if I make other equivalent depend on h bar so, so. if i make or we make let's just let be let let be if we make what we can do, we, we can do, we, we can create a fixed point. So if I have a, like, a, you know, if, if you have other, for specialized current variables, you, it can be, we can create other fixed points. Okay.
means if I impose some equations on on the circular variables, I can create other fixed points. Right? And so if I create other fixed points, if I have created some fixed point, means I can look at at the pre-image and what it, what my variety X looks over over that over that point. So then you know it'd be something. Now how to draw it? Maybe I'll something like that. So means means I uh, I take a neighborhood here and I take a neighborhood there. So this is this is not a it's not an accurate picture, but anyway, some you know could be something like that. And so and so this is as we discussed all the the all the stable envelopes and such, they preserve maps to to affine varieties. And so then when the specialized variables, what I'm gonna act, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get an action. Get an action of my quantum group here. Okay, we will review this next time. And the point is that the point of this construction is that you get this this point, the neighborhood of this point, which I will try to shall try to copy here. So maybe I'll just just draw. A new picture. So I had I had this neighborhood here. This will look like whatever, some something like that. This is in fact this is in fact the neighborhood. of zero in some other quiver variety. And if we look at the pre-image of that, it's in principle some other quiver variety. So, I mean, not in principle, but it is some other quiver variety. This is some other. So in other words, if I get, if I get, if I specialize the variables appropriately, what I can do is I can act, get a map, and this this inclusion, just you know, this this sort of this inclusion. Maybe since I'm talking about cohomology, maybe I'll take inclusion pullback. So it's going to be a map this way. Pullback by inclusion. This would be an intertwiner for the action of my quantum group. And so, and so concretely, so this would be generalities will come next time, but but concrete concrete formulas of that. Would be the would be the following that if I take so remember I had um, I I was thinking if I talk about rank two sheaves then I can take if I take Fox space and uh, let me now let me now write the, uh, the the framing variables multiplicatively as they you know whatever you can maybe. Well, let's do additive. So if I take fork u1 tensor fork u2, so this is irreducible. So this is 
irreducible in general. which is consistent to what I said, is that geometrically we don't get any, any operations of this kind because downstairs we don't have any fixed points of the torus. Everything is contracted to, to a point, but it becomes reducible if, if I get, um, if U1 is, for example, um, Let's see, uh, let me look at my note. If U1 is, I think you can take U2. Uh, maybe let's take U2, Q2. If U2 is U1, minus n t1 and minus t2 and this means this means an operation this is this is some torus and i've i've been writing things in homology but means if you're if you're doing in case here you just multiply it and in elliptic homology you apply the corresponding operations of the group operations there and then we get and if we get that and then you become you go you get a non-trivial intertwiner, this is the slice that would then go to fog. Um, and if I do it correctly, I think it's you take U1 minus T2 tensor fog of U1 minus NT1. And then in, in, for Virasoro, it's it's uh, for Virasoro we, we we know this operator. This is Kirchhoff operator for Virasoro. But like I said, you don't I mean geometrically. You don't need to know. I mean, it's good to know. I mean, this this is screening operator means some particular formula there. But uh, but geometrically, the existence of that is the is the is the operations that I explained, and we'll talk more about next time. And then uh, so this means, <clears throat> and this, the commutation with the screening operators. This in fact is a complete set of relations. This is a complete set of relations. for the Yangian of GL1 head. And it's complete because, well, the way it's in, the way you see it in uh, in the book, G because gives the plug relations. H bar equals zero. And we know the Pluck relations are com whatever cut out what they're supposed to cut out. And so uh <clears throat> so this is and so anyway, this is this has the complete set of relations you can you can uh you can get for the solids, but you can construct geometrically. Now of course this if they construct it geometrically like this, that will they will persist in, in both in K theory and elliptic homology, and so that would be saying, okay, we can deform not only the generators but also the relations. Uh, you can ask, in general, is it always true that, so that's something we hypothesize in that, uh, in that book with Davesh, that, uh, that in general, in fact, this, uh, this slice is give a complete set of relations. There's some ideas how to prove it, but it's not a theorem at this, at this moment in time. If somebody wants to work on that, that could be a good idea. There are other ways, there are exist other ways to prove that the deformation is flat, generically flat, but, uh, but that would be that would be kind of one sort of an interesting geometric question whether you can whether this uh, the certain set of operators is in fact is in fact in fact in general for any for any quiver generalizes uh, generates all relations like I said there's some uh, you know, there's some there's some uh, there's some avenue for research there right so that's uh, that's all for today how about questions.
Any questions today? Sorry, what were these Pluka relations you mentioned at the end? Say it again? Uh, these are Pluka relations for, for what at h bar equals for, uh, So Pluka relations are, so at the Yangen, the Yangen of um, GL1 hat, this is at h, at h bar to zero, this becomes more or less universal developing of GL infinity. And so this is acts in, um, so this is in parts of endomorphisms of Fock space. So take a Fock representation. And you can ask, uh, what are the relations that cut out, cut out the image of, uh, of GL infinity inside the Fock space? And this is means, means if you take, I mean, specifically saying you take, this is the question of like you take endomorphisms of M and you put it inside the endomorphisms of like exterior algebra of M. You can ask what is the what's the what's the relations that cut out that? And that's a that's the correlations. Right, because folk space here you think of the of the folk space here you think of that as as uh, as half infinite kind of wedge of of C infinity. <clears throat> More questions? Yeah, I maybe I I didn't understand this well, but this reducibility at these particular values of, of or this particular value of u1 minus u2 mm -hmm. is that something we, we should think about geometrically or, or yeah exactly geometrically this reducibility comes from the fact that for those values there is so for those values there is a fixed point so maybe so uh, uh, I apologize. maybe maybe it's you know maybe it's easier to explain for t star p1 so it's always, I mean, this is kind of idea that you can explain for T star P1. For T star P1, if I have my, my weight U here, then uh, my weights on, on the outgoing things will be this minus H bar minus U and minus H bar plus U, right? Mm -hmm. So when I contract this to, to the cone, okay, this, this, this is this part is contracted here, but the the weight here will be the same. Well, minus h bar minus u, and h bar plus u, right? And that has to do with the fact that if I take c two of u one, tensor c two of u two, that something happens. Something happens to this product. Precisely when u1 minus u2 is equal to plus minus h bar. So those are the those are precise values where something interesting happens. Maybe I should also remind you that we take we have a <clears throat> we have this you know, kind of cohomology. homology of M2, and then there's a map, there are two maps, it's kind of, there are two different maps, kind of stop, stop minus, homology of M1 tensor square. And the property of this, this, this guy here, this will always have a quotient the way I described it, right? So this is the cohomology. You have something happens. This so if you if you're familiar with the representation theory of the Yangen, this is uh, at special values. This breaks as one and three or three and one. A one is you know one being a quotient, one being uh, a sub. But uh, geometrically, it's this this guy will always have a quote I mean a certain quotient. 
And, uh, but, but it's this map that will also break. So this is like this, this particular, in this particular instance, if you're talking about the, the cohomology of T star P of T, of T star, so in other words, you would take the cohomology of TG2. It's always has a quotient one and always has a sub three. But then the way the way the identification stable envelopes work is that sometimes it works like that, sometimes it works like this. So one being being you take a well here of course you take a if you have a pre-image over this point, it's just a point that when nothing's going on, you get a one-dimensional space where there's this uh, I know if it helps or not, but that's that's a good example to consider. Maybe if you were if you want well, we'll talk more about slices next time. And so that that may be either before next time or after next time you can you can you can consider that example. And then I also have a one more question about uh I guess maybe it was number four of these five mm -hmm. equivalent things. This was the co mm -hmm. C1? Yes. Do I have some similar statement in the case that the fixed locus this co-character doesn't break up as a product of two identical varieties? Well, this does mean they are identical. This okay. is yeah, this 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 means it, it breaks up Anyhow, right? I mean, it doesn't mean they're identical. It just acts on one or the other. It just says that if I take, if I act in the fixed loss, then of course, if I look, suppose I have a fixed locus, if I act in the basis of kind of fixed components, then of course I'm getting a diagonal matrix. But if I'm acting in a stable basis, I'm going to get the same diagonal blocks, but something off diagonal. And that part tells you the off diagonal, I'm going to see a part of the classical R matrix. And that, uh, you know, with appropriate, with appropriate, with appropriate uh, uh, with appropriate uh, factor with appropriate weight, uh, with the, like, you know this this you know the h bar here and pairing with the divisor there. That's a that's a general thing. Yeah. Okay. And sorry, can you remind what this pairing means if I'm not? on this this orange pairing means if I'm not on, on working with like moduli of something over a surface? Oh, it's, um, so uh, you can, uh, the, the classical R metrics, you can, you can break up in pieces, which are just saying that uh, each, you can say it like that. You can say um, pieces come from like pairs of points that line a curve of a certain degree. So that's, that's, okay. Yeah, that's that's what the that's what the breakup. Is. It it doesn't have to be a, a so for for quiver varieties with for quiver varieties it doesn't have to be a surface for quiver varieties the classical R matrix came was some part in uh, um, you take a, just an Nakajima variety with certain dimension vectors that dimension vector was the degree. Yeah, so that's a Nakajima variety is the identification of lattice of dimension vector with both h upper two and h lower two by this. Uh, by this, uh, well, by the, uh, there's a, I apologize, what's it called, the Cartan matrix. And so, uh, and so dimension vector is, is both, you can view it as both an element in, it's both a divisor and both a, as a curve. And, and the way to think about this as a curve is you just take, you can, you know, like we did last time, means you take, uh, you take, same kind of representation, frame it differently. It'll be like a curve in the in in. in there'll be like a curve in the uh, in the quiver right. And degree of that curve depends linearly on dimensional representation. Well, if there's no further questions, if are there any more? Then, then next. So I, I apologize for taking slower than 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 I was planning to, but I think eventually we'll get somewhere. And uh, next.
next time we'll start with the discussion of slices. Thank you so much.